Uh, hello. It's been a while. Life sort of caught up with me. A lot of family stuff that I had to take care of, so I couldn't really dedicate much time to the No Jump Challenge, let alone my own channel. The main reason some of the recent videos I put out the past two or three months seemed a little bit less edited or lazier than usual, but thank you to all the people that are still here and that have helped me through all this bullshit. And with that, a rule refresher. Rule one, no jumping. Rule two, I can trade goods that I farmed, but I cannot trade for warframes. Rule three, no energy consumables. If you haven't seen part one, I highly suggest watching it because fuck me if I don't make my money's worth off this challenge. Also, it's pretty funny and I did not slash dash my way through Jupiter for like five people to see it. Cheat on your man, homie. Ah, I tried to sneak through the door, man. Can't make it, the shit's stuck. Out of my way, son! Let's go. Last time, we completed the methane-filled hellscape that is Jupiter, and now I'm taking my time in obtaining mods, leveling weapons and warframes, and prepping myself for whatever hurdle comes next. We now have Zephyr and her Tailwind, which is a hell of a lot better than Slashdash. Proper vertical movement and reduced energy casts while in the air may seem really good now, but lack of proper mods, such as a non-broken flow or a continuity, makes them but a mere hop. Luckily, we now have Energy Siphon thanks to the Nightwave shop, meaning I have a little bit more wiggle room. I bang out Vox Solaris, which, despite being decently leveled and prepped, was sort of rough. The Corpus units on Venus do not mess around with their deceptively low levels. I just thought Markiplier was bad at the game. No, these, these dudes slap. Welcome to Venus. It'll kill ya. <laughs> oh shit. Well the Oh, was that the b 87? We met up no. with Cephalon Samaris and began the new Strange, which is a prerequisite quest if we want to go further in the story. This takes us to planets we've already been on, which, no surprise, was only made a little bit easier thanks to Tailwind. The derelict can still derelict my balls. Saturn Junction, simple as bird shielding up and unloading some hot heck loving on Ember's face. Saturn is what you'd expect, more grenier galleons and asteroid tiles. If it sounds like I'm blazing through some moments, that's because I am. Not to sound pretentious, but DE gets kind of lazy with the mid-game with all the asset and tile reuse, and we've already determined that these tiles are broken kneecap friendly. Also, shout out to Green Dyes for joining me on stream. I hope you suffered just as much as I did. You soft lock yourself? <laughs> do not have I, enough, do I, not I have it <laughs> my one! Oh no. Stop. What? I uh Green! Uncle Ruckus gets cuckist and we take on the Uranus Junction, showing DE once again what I think about Equinox in 2023. And now we make our way to yet another tile set that I was kind of worried about. Uranus. Uranus is a relatively vertical tile with tons of gaps, but luck be in the air tonight as most of these gaps don't have reset pits, but a pool of water underneath. This puts us into Arcwing, meaning we have little to no consequence for screwing up a dash or a tailwind. I mean, other than Arcwing. <laughs> Killing two Chondrox with one Stug, this is our chance to tackle on the Data Quest, which takes us through the planet, helping us fill up those nodes in the process. We eventually have to do yet another annoying fucking spy mission. I could simply go the long way around, but fuck it, we ball, tailwind through the lasers, don't be a pussy. Tile Regger wastes our time, Frost continues to be mid, and we finish off Uranus with zero jumps and with access to the second dream. Since I've somewhat recently gone over Nata and the second dream on my channel, I won't be going too much into the story. Story beats. Just know that I think this quest is kinda stinky. We're forced to do more Uranus Spy because my balls clearly haven't been flogged enough. And to top it off, we have to listen to Alad V bark in our ear as we do the world's slowest Sharkwing mission. Lotus does a fucky wucky and now we have to go to the void. This may be the one time Zephyr's actually mandatory over Excalibur, as this one hole is just way too tight to slash dash up with the top and bottom having these tiny lips. A vertical movement tech makes this a lot less painful. And with that, we now have access to Lua. 
I hate this place. Not just because of its lumpy terrain or long stretches of absolute nothingness, but because Warframe suffers from bad map syndrome. All thanks to how many fucking offshoots and paths this place has. Also, this boss. Screw it. I have a very limited number of tailwinds and need to time every single one perfectly to bait it into shooting one of these four pillars. And if I get hit once, I am stuck in slash proc hell. I don't know how I did this on my first go, but R and Jesus be damned with how buggy this fight normally is, I'll take it. We rescue ourselves, bring our baby back to the high chair, and now we live in a society. On Neptune, we're back to tile reuse. Corporate frigates and whatnot. We spank the hyena pack, show the poster boy who's boss, and make it to Pluto. To complete the Pluto junction, we need to return to Earth and take out Vehek. Which, yeah. Taking on these earlier tiles with Zephyr's tailwind only makes me wish he was a starter frame more and more. Saren, on the Sedna Junction, is a cunt. Zephyr's bird shield doesn't protect her from abilities. Excalibur's slash dash can't even break her down fast enough. Luckily my stream chat was there to teach my dumbass that Excalibur's radial blind exist. Oh, that does work. Good idea. With all the garbage that I've been ranking, I am now eligible for the Mastery Rank 6 test, and... Hell is no. this? Okay, okay, okay. When I saw this opening shot, my heart stopped, but my worries quickly melted away when I realized it was just an aiming test. I have nightmares of isolation now. I'll be collecting my reparations from Digital Extremes this Tenokan. The War Within. The worst one, apparently. It wouldn't be a cinematic Warframe quest without painfully slow Arcwing segments, right? We're now introduced to the Kuva Fortress, an absolute scrotum of a tie set. This place is a fucking nightmare to traverse with jumping with its looping corridors, multiple levels, and traps. But luckily, the tile for this quest is always the same and eases the player into its bullshit with pretty tame level geometry. We find the three keys needed to take the elevator down to the lower levels and we finally meet the Grenier Queens and then immediately lose our Warframe. Oops! This quest pretty much stands as a tutorial for the operator, their abilities, movement, etc, etc. I know I already took the movement out of Warframe when I decided to not jump, but man... Man! The Ravenous Maw is here to ruin our day. We walk on anything that isn't a rock and we are lunch for the beast. Getting past him, we now have access to Void Sling. Now, at the start of this challenge, I decided Void Sling will count as a jump, its movement is by far the best tech in game. It has infinitely fast regenerating energy, and your frame teleports to wherever you land. Even though it is considered an ability and uses energy, it is the same reason that I exempted getting Wukong. It's brain dead boring. It also requires a spacebar press to move. Luckily, I can use its other function of breaking specific walls or disabling Kuva guards by aiming directly at my feet and going into a dash. I get zero vertical and horizontal momentum, and if I'm inside of the hitbox, it counts. The next room... <sighs> I was here for 30 minutes trying to Skyrim up these damned walls before hitting the game's G-spot allowing me to pass through the gap. Another Ravitous Maw segment is coming up with gaps further away than before, and if you fail, guess where you get sent back to? Luckily, some parts of the wall have a few pebbles that count as solid ground, letting you stand on it while staying out of danger. Fuck. I spent 20 or 30 minutes here trying to find a way up. There were spots below that allowed me to stand without being in danger of the maw, but the vertical cliffs were just way too steep to Skyrim up on either side, and god forbid you get eaten. Oh, you've got to be shitting me. I was completely stumped. So after six mastery ranks and 30 hours of not jumping, I finally had to break rule number one. Some may disagree with Void Sling being a jump, but as I said before, with little to no downsides, even with a non-kitted out operator, 
It is far too good of a movement tech and requires the spacebar. The rest of the quest requires multiple uses of Void Sling, needing it to cross impossible to traverse gaps with the ravenous maw, to needing it to scale this cliffside. And while you can use the downward dash technique against Kuva guards, you need a ranged one to finish off the Worm Queen in the final fight. I was honestly surprised I was even able to get this far, with it taking around 40 attempts to complete just the tutorial alone, and hours, and I mean hours, to get through Jupiter with only Slash Dash. I am floored that I was able to make to the final stretch of the second cinematic quest. In the end, I've learned a lot about Warframe and their level design philosophy, more than I really should have, about how accessible Digital Extremes has made their tiles for all different styles of play, all while fitting cohesively into a believable setting. And with that, we close the book on this chapter. Can you beat Warframe without jumping? No. Kinda. Maybe. Not really. I need a drink. <laughs>